So this morning I am heading to you pull our parts to scour the junkyard for an alternator that will fit in the small space next to my reversed intake and also uh, just check out some Subarus that they got in stock. I see that they have a uh, Outback XT which would be cool to look at and my friend uh, could use some parts for his car. Also there's a Forester there. I'm going to go through and see if there's any uh, pieces that I can use for the Impreza whether it's like trim bits or uh, anything that I'm missing or might be kind of in rough shape on my car. And yeah, it's uh, also a good time to pick up just like generic relays, stuff like that, anything that you, you could possibly want. So we're going to go scour the junkyard and see what we find. Since it was possible we might bring a few larger items back, we decided to go full overkill and borrow this Cummins turbo diesel. This thing makes over 30 pounds of boost and highway speeds feel almost like idle. Once at the junkyard, I headed over to the import section. I was looking for a very small alternator to squeeze next to my charge pipes. It's a great place to get cheap used parts. If you need something specific, you better get there early. For example, this forest has been picked pretty clean. I did get the Momo steering wheel from the Outback XT, as well as upgraded power steering lines. Shout out to these two guys. On the left there, that's Jordan, one of the brilliant minds behind the 24 Hours of Lemons Binford Beretta. As of late, he's building a twin-turbo C5 Corvette. On the right, we have Engineer Jake. This guy knows more about Subaru than anybody else I know. He's heavily influenced all of my builds, and he even built my first EG33 Impreza wiring harness. Next, I need to find a place for my intake air temperature sensor. This is just a generic General Motors part that I found in the junkyard in a previous trip. It needs to find a home post throttle on my intake manifold. I used a stepper drill bit to drill this out to 9 16 Eventually, I'll tap it with a 3 8 inch NPT tap. After that, Jordan stopped by to teach me how to make hard lines for the turbocharger coolant feed and return. He's already done the same thing on his Corvette, which is a much tighter squeeze than on my Subaru here. On both cars, having these hard lines near the exhaust is going to be way better than using rubber hose. Ah, get this part yeah. once for science. Capture the magic here. I don't know if. Uh... I don't know if you can really see the flaring happening, it's a little dark in there. It's 
That's it. Clutch for the win. Clutch for the win. And I did remember to put the uh, the sleeve in the nut on, so <laughs> we don't even have to make it again. Yeah. Oh, that's money. There you go. So I've been plumbing my turbo, oil, and coolant lines, and it actually takes quite a bit of thought to figure out where you're going to run the oil lines from and the coolant lines from, and then obviously you got to plumb them back uh, into the system somewhere. So I've went through the painful process of doing all of that and I have most of it plumbed and I'm going to go ahead and show you all that now. All right, so on this side you can see on top right there that is the banjo bolt for the turbo feed on this side. Uh, this elbow here is going to be for the coolant return line. I'll show you how it's actually going to be when we get to the other side. There's the oil drain and it is angled downward towards the bottom point of the system. Um, there's also, you can't really see it in there from this side, you see right down there is a hard line for the coolant feed and since it's so close to the manifold we were able to make hard lines for that going over to the other side. And let's go over here. Similar setup here. Uh, on top, you can see the banjo bolt. Similar setup here on top, you can see the banjo bolt for the oil feed. And the coolant return is a hard line going up right up through there. I'll show you that in a sec. There is the oil drain. And on the other side, we also have um, like a 90 degree or a 45 degree elbow coming off that side and there is the other hard line going next to the exhaust manifold and there is the oil drain line going down to the scavenge pump <clears throat> I will show you underneath so if we crawl under here there is the oil scavenge pump obviously on the bottom there is a T for the drain from that side and the drain from this side fairly happy with how both those turned out now on top there there is a 90 and that is a one-way valve that will let oil go back into the engine but won't let any come out through here so then that goes up and that goes right here to this bulkhead fitting first you have the 90 and then going into the bulkhead fitting in the oil pan that I showed in the previous episode yeah, so that worked out pretty well. Again, you can see the uh, hard line for the coolant going to the turbo. In the middle, we've just done rubber hose since we didn't need it to go that long. Same thing on this side, we've got the hard line for the coolant line. And if you look up here, this is the oil sandwich adapter. <clears throat> I've drilled and tapped a fitting coming out of that, going to a T, one for each side, for one for each turbo. Out the front, those are the AN lines that are going to be for my oil cooler that I'm yet to make. We'll be making that soon. That pretty much wraps up underneath the car here. I'll show you where the coolant lines come out on top. So right here is the coolant line coming from the turbocharger, coming back into the coolant system, and that just tucks in exactly where the uh, in the coolant cross tube that goes across here. There are two hose barbs, one on this side for the throttle body feed and the other one on the other side for the throttle body return. So coolant used to throw, flow through the throttle body. Actually there's two hose barbs, one right there and one right down there. Uh, I'm not going to have uh, coolant going through my throttle body. That's not really a concern for me. And the other one, uh, the same exact thing will come up through here and go to um, this hose. Right here there's a T into right where it goes into the heater core. So that's where the throttle body used to get coolant feed and return from. So I'm just replacing that with um, coolant feed and return to my turbos. So it's going to be run in series. So from one side to one turbo to the other turbo, then back to the coolant system. Um, is that ideal? No, you'd probably want to do it in parallel, if, like ideally, 
or best case, but um, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that are not even running coolant to their turbochargers, so I think that'll be more than sufficient for what I'm doing here. So one last piece of the puzzle, the PCV coming from underneath the intake going into the crankcase. So any pressure that builds up in the crankcase, you want it to go back up into the intake. But now in a boosted application, we don't want pressure coming from the intake going into the crankcase. So what I've done is installed a one-way valve between the crankcase and the intake, um, leaving the factory PCV in the system, and I'll show you how I've done that. So here's underneath the intake manifold, and now this is kind of pointing the opposite direction as it would um, if you hadn't rotated the intake like I have, but to get it pointing back the correct way, I decided to go with this 90, and here we have a quarter inch BSPT fitting down there, and that's just going to allow us to use this 90 here, which is also BSPT. I believe this is 5 8 NPT on this side, and I have a bushing 5 8 NPT to again quarter inch BSPT. I had to have this shipped over from the UK um, because it's not a very common thing in the US. And then I just have a factory PCV valve here. And so these are allegedly one way. It's the same PCV that Subaru has always used. Uh, the WRX, the SVX, everything comes with this same PCV valve. Um, and so I've just left this in place but when uh, when I try to put air through it both ways it's not really a one-way valve so some air can leak through it which I don't really like so what I've went ahead and did is I got this one-way valve here this is a Anderson one-way valve um, it's very common for um, people to use these in a GM boosted application but this one's slightly bigger because I wanted it to match the uh, three-quarter inch PCV uh, on the block here. So this side is three-quarter inch, this side is 5 8 hose barb. I'm going to use some oil hose going between this and the PCV valve and then we'll call it a day. We've got a one-way valve in here so this is actually it opens one way at 0.3 psi and the other way it will not open and I've tested that it works really well. So again the idea is that any pressure building up in the crankcase can push into the intake and maybe there's some oily air or whatever in there and it'll get burnt no big deal but then if we have boost pressure it can't get into the crankcase so that is the whole point of this if you're running a boosted application in your EG33 uh, I would recommend doing something similar but um, that valve is probably uh, 20 or 30 bucks I will link you to it in the description, but that's going to give some more confidence. Um, eventually I'll probably go oil cash can, and from there we will hopefully not have any um, pressure oil issues in the intake side. Next time on Easy On Cars, I'll be showing you how I completely finish the cold side piping, and eventually we'll be welding up the exhaust. Take it easy, Easy On Cars.